Sega. Motorsport Manager puts you in control of an entire motorsport team. You're in charge of everything from hiring and firing of the drivers and the staff, developing your car and headquarters, and making those all-important decisions that ultimately decide whether you win or lose. To become a champion, you'll need to build your team, master the tech, and make the right calls to win the race. In this series of videos, we're going to guide you through what it takes to kickstart your career as a motorsport manager. Racing drivers and mechanics are not machines, they're people. They can fall out with each other, they can ignore orders. Being a motorsport manager is just as much about people management as it is about the development of a fast car. It's not enough to just develop the fastest car on the grid. You need to understand how your team, your drivers, your finances, everything affects what happens on race day. I'm here with Sam White, who is the art director for Motorsport Manager. Sam, can you just explain, first of all, what it is you do on the game? So I'm the art director here at PlaySport Games, and um, my pro prominent um, experience is in UI design as a graphic designer. Um, so my job here is to work on the UI um, specifically, but then also help the artists mm -hmm. guide them in the direction that we want to take the game. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on, uh, it's all about building your team. It's your drivers, your mechanics, your headquarters, everything. So, I mean, you're going to show us th through a little bit um, certain areas of the game. Uh, might, we might as well start with the drivers, I guess. Yeah, that sounds um, like a good plan. So this is the driver overview, overview screen here. And as you can see, I've got my two main drivers on the left and my reserve driver here just on the right. Under the two main drivers, you can see there's a team made comparison mm -hmm. here. And one thing we really want to do is create the rivalry between your two drivers. Now, for me, it's, I want to be constantly aware of which of my two main drivers are performing better. Mm -hmm. You know, because if one's not up to scratch and he's not winning or getting as many points as the other, I'm going to be thinking about bringing someone new in. Mm -hmm. I mean, not everyone's like that, but maybe I'm a bit more cutthroat. You know, it's not all about how quick your car is and yeah. the tech that you've got. The team are really important. You know, making those little decisions on bringing someone that's got that bit more potential or is a faster driver, he will make the difference on mm -hmm. race day. So I managing your staff is really important okay. in the game. I can see at the moment uh, your two drivers are equal status. Yeah. Um, depending on how one is performing than the other, can they sort of bid for one is to be the lead driver or the, or the number two driver? So. Because presumably that will come into when you're developing parts as well, the number one driver will want the parts first. Yeah, so th this example here with the two drivers being equal status comes down to how they were brought into the team for their contract. Right. So when I'm in a contract negotiation with a driver, I basically say, I'll give you this status and right. I'll give you this amount of money and you're pretty much at that point you're saying you're you're guaranteeing the driver what they're going to get. Now that can change through the, the season so I could bring in one driver I said he's my number one driver a couple of months later on I bring in someone new I've told him he's going to be my number one driver right. almost demoting my initial driver down. So with these things there's going to be caveats though because if I do that that other driver's morale his, his how much he likes me is going to be really affected. So it is about making promises with these, with these guys. You know, like I said, they have personalities, they have feelings, so, so you want to look after them. So it's them. about people management as it well. Is. It's about making sure that your drivers are happy, their morale is high, but also as they're performing, that their confidence is high as well. That's true, yeah. So it's not just about how they're performing on the track, it's how technically you're managing them off that's track it. as well. Yeah, that's it. Let's just jump into the, like, the driver details here for Harry. Mm -hmm. Now there's quite a lot of stats here, but the fundamentals are his star, star um, rating here is made up from his driver stats. Right. And as you can see here, they're all broken down from braking to cornering to smoothness um, and everything that will impact how he does right. on the track. And I see that each driver also has a mechanic. Now, is this a lead mechanic or is it one that works on specific areas? So each driver comes with their own mechanic. We'll jump into the star screen in a second. Sure. But what we do is we pair up the mechanic with the driver. Okay. Um, and one thing you can see here is that it states how many weeks they've been together. Mm -hmm. um, and what you get, the longer they've been together, the longer the relationship of those two is right. built, the better bonuses you're going to get come race day. Right. So in this scenario here, there's, they've only had two weeks together. So the bar is empty. But you can see here, these are the bonuses that they're going to get once they reach that, that amount of time right, together. Okay. So here it's saying uh, it's, he's going to get a, a bonus on medium tyres. So when it comes to race day, uh, his medium tyres are going to wear. 
Got less. You. Okay. Um, and if you spend a hell of a lot of time together, then there's other things, other bonuses. So he's going to get a super overtake mode. So this is going to give him more bonuses come race day. Right. Okay. Um, but what this is, what one really interesting thing about this is, if I go to another team and I think oh, I'm going to bring in this driver, he's a great driver. I bring him in. One thing worth doing is having a little look at his mechanic. mechanic with you as yeah, well. because if their relationship's really high and he's already got those bonuses with him. Mm there's a point that you might want to bring that guy in too. So is that part of the contract negotiations or is that a, a deal that you would do separately it, yeah, with the mechanic? Yeah, it would be a separate deal right. for a hiring of a mechanic. So let's have a little look at the, um, the staff now. So as we talked about earlier, we talked about the mechanics, they're tied to the drivers. Sure. We also have a chief engineer and his job is more focused on the um, part development and the car. Right. You know, you want to bring in a good chief and uh, chief designer because his his skill set is effectively going to be one of the things that gets you a better car. Got you. So it's not just about making sure that you have the best drivers in the team as well. You need to be able to make sure that you're getting the best mechanics in terms of your chief designer and your race mechanics, but also the mechanics that are tied to the driver as yeah. well. So it, it is really about building the whole team. It's yeah. not just about making sure you have a good driver in place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's really important. And like we said about the relationships with the mechanics, it really is important to try to get those bonuses for the relationships with both drivers mm -hmm. and, and mechanics. And again, you can see here, so these guys again have a similar range of stats and contract details. Um, and again, you can fire these guys and you can scout to find new mechanics and engineers. So this is probably a good, a good point to start looking at maybe hiring a new driver. Sure, let's see it. if we can replace someone. So let's approach this driver. Hopefully he's gonna turn around to me and say, yep, Okay. I'm one of the I'm one of the higher teams in the game, one of the top end teams, and Team Kirov are in the championship below. Mm -hmm. So this guy's thinking, God, this is my chance to race one of the big teams. So he's he's more likely to be interested. So he's potentially Kirov. looking to make a step up from a lower series into that's right. Into, well, it's not just a, a higher series, a bigger team because you've chosen yeah. Steinman as yeah. a big team. Yeah, I've chosen one of the bigger, bigger teams. But for example, if I chose one of the smaller teams in the lower championships, and I approach drivers in that top end, the chances are they're going to turn around to me and say they might be not, less interested not in interested right, in okay. coming to my team so being a bigger team that does give you that little luxury that right. a lot of drivers will want to come to you but you know they're going to start they know that you're a bigger team they're going to start demanding probably a little bit more they so, want money they want higher status or that's okay. it so what we have here is this is pretty much all of the contracts um, terms if we have a little look on the right hand screen here you can see this little thing called patience mm -hmm. And what patience is, is um, what we use that as is, you know, if you walk into a meeting with me mm -hmm. and we want to talk contracts, if I offend you with something and say, look, I'll offer you this amount right. of money, and you're like, I send this contract off to you, you get it back, and you're really angry of what I've sent you, that's going to add a little bit, that's going to add a, a little cross to this in terms of patience. So you only get so many chances to give them the right offer. That's right. right. And all drivers come with different amounts of patience. Now, this driver, he's got four four lots of patience that's pretty good you can go back to him probably four times you and you're can, probably you going to negotiate a few times yeah it's not going to be too difficult some drivers might come with one you know <laughs> right. and if you, you don't get chance. and you got one chance and if you don't get that contract right first time round, then it's going to be a long time before you can approach that guy again got you so at, when we talked about earlier with status so you've got the position within the team here mm -hmm. and you can see i've got it as uh, there's an option here for number one driver number two driver equal status or a re reserve mm -hmm. driver so whatever i'm promising to him here i'm going to kind of have to make sure that's what i you know right. it's going to offend my other driver if i already have a number one sure. driver but yeah. and also there's a sort of priority of what he's looking for at the moment that's so it at the moment, most of those are low, but on got contract preferences, that's the medium one. So yep. his position in the team is worth more than, than everything anything else. else. To that that's moment, true. Right? Yeah, they all, this, this driver in particular hasn't really got many preferences at all. You all come to somewhere, a lot of these will say hi. You know? right. Some might be you know, more focused on their position in the team, which obviously this guy is, mm -hmm. whereas others will be all about bonuses. Got you. you know? 
Um, so we can see here we've got his wage, and because I've scouted him it, on the right hand side, here, it tells you what his existing contract at his other team oh, okay. was. So it gives me a bit of a benchmark to approach him with. We'll, we'll put him up at 150,000. So we can see what he's getting in his current team, and then just yeah. get, we, can we can judge whether, what, whether we think he's going to be asking for a lot more or just yeah, a bit more. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. We got here the contract length, so it's pretty much a one, two, or three year contract. We'll just try off from a one year contract, see how he does. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to time in too long. That's going to be a, a hefty, you know, a bigger sum of a break clause if we if we try bring him in. Sure. For, so in this sense, I'm thinking this guy might be good. Let's try him out for a year. Um, let's not too, take too much of a risk of him because if he's not performing after two or three races, then we can try and maybe get someone else in. Sure. Uh, buyout clause. So what this means is he has a contract with his current team. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see it's 800,000 here. And it's down to me if we're going, okay, well, I'll pay that complete buyout right, clause. Okay. Or let's split it evenly. So that'd be me paying half and the actual driver paying half to get right. himself out of the contract. Um, or the driver pays all of his. Right, so okay. this driver, for example, he's from a lower team. Yeah. This is his dream team coming to, come to my team to drive in my car. Mm -hmm. So he might be more willing to pay out right. his brake clause. Okay. So we'll give that a go. I could be saying that, but, but he, he might. But there's, a, there's, there's every chance that he'll come back and say no, and then we'll try again. With there, a there's a good right. chance. Okay. But, but looking at, he's got four lots of patience. There's a good chance. It, I've got a bit. Of, there's a bit of wiggle room he, there. So no let's, let's start low okay. and work our way up. So we've got bonuses here. We can add bonuses for signing on fees, qualifying bonuses, and race bonuses. A signing on fee is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Qualifying bonuses, okay, so what it states here is if he comes 15th or above, he's going to earn 50,000. Right. Now, in my team, I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting... You want to put more pressure on him because you yeah, are... The, well, there's pressure team. on you to perform anyway, so... Exactly, so let's put a little bit on. Let's say second or above, and that's going to start pushing him to try to get some more bonuses. We'll give him some more money there. And that looks good to me, so let's send off that. That's now being sent over to him. Mm -hmm. He's going to take a bit of time to look at that. Um, again, we've let a bit of time pass and it looks like we've got the contract back. We pop to our driver's screen. And on the right hand side here, this panel is all about driver negotiations. Right. Now, one thing that's really good what you can do is, yeah, I've gone to this particular driver, mm -hmm. but I can negotiate as many contracts with different people all at once okay. if I want to. Um, so I can be teeing up all different kinds of options, all different kind of drivers, and it's down to me whether I, which one I choose effectively. And that's the same whether it's a driver, a mechanic, or a exactly, designer. Exactly the same, yeah. And obviously, um, when it comes to building your team, developing your car, you've got a lot of staff. Um, can we just talk a little bit about the headquarters as well? Because depending on what team you have obviously your headquarters can start quite small but over yep. time you can build them up so should, should we just take a look at what the different stages of hq development yeah, let's have a look so this is obviously being steinman this is one of the more of the top end teams so their hq is at this point it's quite vast it's quite big mm -hmm. they're quite a lot further forward than most other teams um, but there's still a lot of areas to grow in this particular team. Now, on the right-hand side here, we can see this this panel here, and what it what it's giving us in this headquarter stats is these bars here resemble the uh, they basically illustrate the categories of building types in the game. Right. So we have the brand buildings, we have the staff buildings, performance, factory, and design center. And, and what you sort of puts it into perspective as well, where you sit amongst your competitors. Yeah. As well. So because these bars are all right at the top, it's basically saying I am the, in this particular area of my HQ. I am the best in the championship, right. and that's why I'm at the top of most of these. My team is probably the biggest, has probably the best HQ in the championship, except for its design centre. Okay. So that might be something we look to improve. We can um, check out my. Design center, which is over here. Yeah. Um, and one thing we'll talk about later on is how the design center and factory and the buildings in the HQ impact um, my tech and right. car development. So HQ is a bit more of the long-term game. You know, it's not like hiring drivers or no. building parts. This is very much uh, a long-term strategy of the game. You know, it's going to take you months and months to build buildings and mm -hmm. upgrade buildings. So, and it's expensive. It's not going to be cheap to, you know, the, building a new factory over 
bring in a new mechanic is going to be really expensive. But these long-term decisions are going to be the things that effectively make, give you a better car mm. long-term. So ultimately, this will come down to uh, our, which is what is our next video, which is mastering the technology. And each, uh, each design, whether it's the factory, the design center, the test track, these will all affect different areas of how you can develop your car over time as well. That's it, yeah, yeah, it will. Um, and here you can see on this part of the, of the screen, you can see that your current knowledge, we'll go into this a bit in car development, but uh, it's, it's basically all the buildings are relating back to the part development right. of the game. And at this point, I've got what says states as epic is saying I have the highest opportunity to build the best parts sure. with the current facilities that I have. Because now I've pretty much upgraded everything to the max level, I now have the opportunity to build much better parts. Sure. Well, that'll probably do it for Build the Team. Thank you, Sam. And make sure you check out our next video, which will be Master the Tech. And make sure you like, subscribe below. Stay tuned for our next video in the series, which will be Master the Tech, and keep up with all the latest from Motorsport Manager by clicking the subscribe button below.